So it appears uh, that main agenda in today's uh, meeting organized by the School Teachers Federation of India is basically the national education policy. But I have been given an impression that, and that's why my relevance of coming over here, that is NPS and OPS issue. But I don't find any paper in your compilation except writing on the writing pad on its cover. However, when I have come, let us speak a few words. I think she has explained in detail the national education policy. That need not be reiterated. But if one say in a single sentence, it is a flexible market-based model of education without regulation. That is states we are on the 75th year of our independence now. Amrut Mahatsab. We are in the midst of Ajadika Amrut Mahatsab. So the state's responsibility on the education, which was conceived to be the a basic responsibility while framing our constitution immediately after independence. This education policy has given a complete go-by to that. It's a market-based, flexible market-based model. And market, the basic issue is, those who can purchase, they can only come to market. They cannot, they are out. And this has really started happening. I don't know how much... Uh, information you do keep. The number of schools being closed all over the country. Number of schools. They are being closed. Some new are also coming on private ownership. And in that market, the majority of the poor population are debarred for entering. That's the reality. Flexible market-based model aimed at commercialization of the entire education. Not only that, I think uh, one angle needs to be uh, brought here. The manner they are embedding the apprenticeship concept in the whole process of education. The, I think 2021, Nirmala Sitaraman made a call that he has made a 3,000 crore budget to incentivize the employers to put more trainees in the production process. And what the trainees will do, they will not learn because they come to become a trainee in that manufacturing unit only after being trained in the formal education system, including the ITIs and all these things. Delhi, they can get the passport of entering into trainees and they will be put straight to the production process. So, a big chunk of the workforce present day in the manufacturing system are trainees and apprentices. And a more than 50% of the funding for those trainee and accept, apprentices are being supplied from the National Exchequer as an incentive to the employers to promote this concept of trainees. As a result, at least one third, rather more than that, in the workforce in all major production establishments, including your Maruti, they are trainees working along with the regular workers and contract workers in the same shop floor doing the identical job and only difference that they don't get the minimum wage they get a stipend no social security benefit 
but contributing fully to the production process. An efficient market-based flexible model. And in consistence with that, your present education policy are now going to embed, whether it has drawn your attention or not, National, the education department special workshop, they have pointed out that they are going to put, make it compulsory, the internship. It is not only for the technology, technical uh, students, but also for the general students. Before getting a degree, you have to be interned for some years, in some institutions, it means that you have to work without any pay. You have to work in value addition, but without any return. And they are making it compulsory in the going to embed it in the even the degree education system, which are not technical in other streams, that in order to get your degree, you have to go in for internship for a defined period in any of the business establishment to complete your degree. That system, they, it is having in their planning and in the national education system policy, the model they have already declared, it very much fits in because the whole philosophy has been defined a market-based flexible system without <coughs> regulation they are going to put in place. That is one aspect I like to draw your attention besides the issues already brought forth by Oishi, I did not repeat it. The total commercialization and pushing out a big section of the population, poor population, out of the right to education. And finally the RTE is going to be scrapped. Maybe not today, but sometimes after the ground is being prepared by the government. In this whole architecture of the national education policy they have brought it. All this detail you know, so I did not go into detail to educate you on that. But I like to point out this angularity. Uh, you have to see the elephant as a whole, not piece by piece. It is in the interest of maximization of profit in an otherwise neoliberal capitalist model. And this education model system policy is fitting in with that neoliberal philosophy and it has to be looked into that angle otherwise. We cannot enter the arena of combat. They have put that in the place. They are already implementing it, how to combat. At present, we are in a combative stage in your respective workplaces. The same market-based flexible model are being preparatory to that. Already a situation so created in your workplaces than in majority of the states, the school education in particular is also dependent on a big chunk of para-teachers, contract teachers, who don't have the right except the consolidated payments. And in practically in most of the states, now the number of teachers are such as we see. If you really study, I think more input you should give us. That it is dependent on them and they are not everywhere organized neither being organized by you, the organization you represent. Without organizing them, can you ever dream of going in for a combat against these policies? As a trade union activist, we have been trying since last 10 years or more than that to bring them under the organization, organized movement, under the school teach, teaching teachers movement, we failed to do, and we have organized, started organizing themselves separately. That's the reality. And by a bitter struggle, they are still maintaining their status, maintaining their job and income. Although very poorly paid income. 
they cannot dream of their NPS and OPS by. They are not qualified in coming that region. My point is that you should discuss. I am just throwing a question before you. Whether we can think of combating this atrocious national education policy which is going to spread poison over the entire society and which will also deprive a major section of our population from the right to education, whether we can combat this without drawing into four the major section of those who are engaged in teaching community who are all para and contract teachers. Linked to that, I draw your attention, again the same market based flexible policy. The Anganwadi system, which used to make the way for a remote village area, the pre-primary level children through pre-primary education to the doors of the schools, now, government is going to do away with that. They are telling that they will merge it with the school education system. The schools are getting closed. Schools are not being properly manned by regular teachers. And at the same time, a big chunk of particularly rural children who are moving between the two provocations, either to go to school or go to their parents in the field, that's the reality today. If that system goes, that route is blocked. And almost along with that, the national child level project, which started initially with the World Bank aid, subsequently, government has adapted that program. That among the child labor dominated sector, this national child labor project are mandated to bring those children, create an interest for them in education, and gradually channelize them to the mainstream school education. Now that project, government has taken a decision that child labor no more, it is finished, um, ended in our country. So NCLP should not be there. It should be merged with Sarva Shiksha Abhijan. And in that government order, not even a single word is written there about 45,000 NCLP teachers and staff. They are a part of your teaching community. Same teaching community. About a few days back, they had a two days long dharna here and they are planning some other actions. We have taken up. And government made a state reply, oh, we can't do anything. That will go with SKS. But what about the teachers who are there since the beginning of the scheme for about more than 10, 15 years, where they will go? Nothing. A market-based flexible policy without regulation. These are all reflection of the same philosophy in and around the country's education system. On higher education, I think she told elaborately, I did not go into that area. But there again, the right to have access, the poor people, poorer segment are being deprived because of the aggressive commercialization process of the system. And I don't know the future, future of the central universities, which are still running with government support, how long they will continue to get that support, because that kind of support from the government exchequer is not fitting with the very philosophy of the national education policy the market-based flexible approach, you have to decide. These are all on our head, how to combat. And as a sideline, I believe you have taken that as a sideline issue, your NPS and OPS. That has long been in action. 
they are already in operation your pension was to be defined by a defined pension scheme based on 50% of your last pay drawn average of last one year now it is being converted into the new pension scheme where you have to contribute or on your account the government also contribute a part that money has to go to the fund manager they will speculate in the market in some year month you may get 2000 rupee pension in some month you may get 20 rupee pension because as your fund earns from the market again a market based flexible scheme without any regulation entire life has entire society is embraced governance of the society is embraced by this philosophy of neoliberalism the basic philosophy being the market based flexible system without any regulation that was already on our head that was in every workplaces i am just coming from a convention of the national is going on i spoke represent, presented the paper and came and i'll go back again the ncr just in our office nearby around 100 or Industrial workers came in the national capital region and they are giving their experiences. It's horrible. The entire NCR region is contributing to GDP by to the tune of more than 80%. That is single region in the country which is making the highest contribution to BGP, GDP. Globally, Around 300 metropolitan cities, NCR's contribution to industrial production, manufacturing value addition is ranking in number six out of 300 global metropolitan cities. We are discussing and we saw the same story of a market-based flexible system without any regulation. It is just not education policy. It is every aspect of life, and that is what is neoliberalism. In the name of development, in the name of efficiency. But basic goal is to loot and plunder the people and the national resources. So in this situation, I think we are already in a reign of combat. How we will combat, that you have to decide. And for combating, I think the entire community who are in your organization or out, unless they are taken together, combating is not possible. So, how you plan that? Oishi has rightly sold the students' community, teachers' community, and the whole community of people who are being affected, deprived, are to be brought within the vortex of struggle and a struggle means not agitation but combat how will plan the combat you have to decide you have to plan so far as nps and ops is concerned already it has started demonstrating its failure the nps money wherever it is being invested by different fan managers are marking a loss, huge loss of even the principal amount, the money, your own money, which is going to channelize through NPS. Already it is a loss. Your pension is going to be minimal or no pension. That kind of a regime we are going to hit. This is an experience globally also. Wherever public fund, pension fund is put on market forces for speculation, everywhere there is a loss because it is a collective money, not everybody's principal personal money. When a public money is put on speculative market, I think as teacher you know better than me that it is to create temperature in the market and out of that temperature, the individual investor will try to make their bucks, make their gains. But the collectively, the principal amount goes. That's the global experience. But despite that, despite 
it is in operation even globally because in most of the states, advanced states, they ensure a guaranteed amount of pension. Till now the system is in force in Europe and also to some extent in USA. But in our case of thing, no guaranteed amount. If you get, you get a fortune. If you don't get, you get zero. That is what is NPS and OPS. Again, another expression of a flexible, non-regulated, market-based scheme. Now, this needs to be combated and I think there is a prospect of more direct combat in this area. Because you are not the only player in the field, teachers. There are government employees, there are central government employees, there are railway employees, there are lot of other people who are also equally planning for a combat because they have already started filling the pinch. Initially when it came to parliament, unfortunately or fortunately I was then a member of Rajya Sabha. We debated on it. Everybody spoke very loudly. But when division came, that is voting on this came, everybody those who are in government and in principal opposition, dono mila ke bhole baba par karega bol diya. Because both are convinced on the same philosophy. They go by the same philosophy. You can't expect them. So our area of combat is on the field. How do you do it? And in here there is a scope of doing it. Others affected communities are also in the field, a much bigger community, having more striking power, I believe, and having more striking habit. I think with them you must coordinate. If at all on this issue you have a plan to combat the NPS OPS issue, that's the need of the hour. And different, being a part of the trade union movement, I know the state government employees, the central government employees are planning for a joint action. I think you should join them, coordinate with them on this issue to make a common force because the most positive development on this issue is that in many states, the younger segment of these uh, workers now then that number is also less because recruitment is almost closed in most of the government establishments, both state and center. But whatever is there, they are the most aggrieved state and they are coming out very openly on the street, on that issue. So there is a scope of a much combat. And because of that atmosphere, you must have noticed that Rajasthan government has declared they will go back to the old pension scheme. The Chhattisgarh government has also declared they will go back to the old pension scheme. It is under political compulsion. How far they will be able to go, I have every doubt. When there is a central scheme, how they will go, I have every doubt. But under compulsion, they have to come out in the open. Although they are political community, also participated in that criminal act of passing the PFRDA Act in the parliament, in the face of my eyes. So, but under compulsion. So, whatever temperature that could be generated has created compulsion in certain political corners. And if the concerted actions debilitating action in the sense strike and others. If they are planned along with the central state government and other players, very affected communities in the field, I think that is a positive chance of making the government retreat. That is to be understood and accordingly I think initiative need to be taken. With these few words I support that we are in a, the basic issues you have taken up, we are in an arena of combat. We can explain, we can further 
detail go into it that needs to be taken among the people and involving them if we go for a combat i am definite people never get defeated people always win we have just seen sri lanka in our face uh, i think that perspective uh, you have to plan your activity thank you for for your patience here